Michael, we're talking about fasting. You wrote a book called Fasting, Rediscovering the Ancient Pathways. Um, there are a lot of objections that people have to fasting. One of those would be, um, you know, that somebody, somebody did it and it, you know, they broke their fast early or, or maybe there's a person who's watching who, who did that. They, they broke their fast early and they feel a little bit guilty and under condemnation. What do you say to that person? Uh, I would say, firstly, respond to the invitation of the Lord and not the weight and the burden of what someone else in your life may lay on your life. I think it's first and foremost important to understand what God is asking me to do uh, because that's where there's grace. Mm. God will always give me grace to do the things he wants me to do. Um, now, if you've come under the tension of fasting for the reason that maybe somebody else in your life is fasting and they asked you to fast with them, uh, maybe you weren't able to complete that fast. Maybe your church is fasting and you thought because everybody else is doing it, I'm going to jump in and I'm going to try to do it too. Uh, none of these are really good enough reasons to fast. Uh, I love you, but if you decide you're going to miss a meal, Believe me, I'm going to have to hear from the Lord because I'm not missing meals for you, yeah. right? I'm missing meals for Jesus. Yeah. And if I'm missing meals for Jesus, then I've got to believe that what he's asking me to do, he's going to give me grace to do. Now, there's obviously the other side. What happens when I know that he's invited me in, that he's given me grace, and somewhere along the way, um, I just turn aside and I'm not able to do it. I'm going to liken it to, let's say, exercise and working out. For me... I have to understand that if I've never worked out a day in my life and I get under, let's say, a bench press, bench pressing 400 pounds is not something that I'm going to be able to tackle in the beginning. So I have to start where I am. And maybe that's the way that we need to approach a lifestyle of fasting. However you have to get in, get in. And let God prescribe for you along the way what he's asking you to do. One meal, one day, three weeks, whatever that may be, what he's speaking to you. But in the place of failure, understand... Uh, I'll give a personal experience. In my early days of fasting, I wasn't able to complete a fast. And I was sitting with the Lord and I was totally destroyed. Totally destroyed. I wanted God. I wanted to please God. And as I was sitting with the Lord, I said, God, you know that I really wanted to do this. And he said, Mike, in this moment, your desire moved my heart more than the completion. Wow. Your desire moved my heart more than the completion. Now, this isn't a license to cut out of every fast early. It's not what I'm saying. We should always strive to, like Paul says, finish the race, you know, complete whatever it is that the assignment that's been put before us. However, just like we would with our own kids, the fact that you wanted to do it, the fact that you wanted to walk with me and please me and be with me in this wow. way meant more to me because at times we think, unless I do it, he's not going to be satisfied. But it's the condition of our heart Mm -hmm. that means more to God. Because you can complete a fast and have a terrible heart. You can complete a fast and you can complete multiple fasts and still never really please God because you've been doing it for yourself. So the condition of the heart is something we always have to come back to mm -hmm. and just grow from there. I have to, I have to address this because I, I know people are going to be thinking this as they're watching. You talked about the grace being there to fast. But what if, what if, you know, you also said that you know you need to fast when you don't want to fast. So if there's somebody sitting there going, well, the grace isn't there because I just don't want to do this. How do they distinguish between, you know, the Lord isn't asking you to do this. Don't be burdened by what somebody else is telling you to do or whatever. And distinguishing between that and the fact that their flesh just doesn't want to come under something like fasting. Sure. Um, I find the resistance from our flesh is going to be brought up in multiple ways. The same grace that's there in the place of fasting is the same grace, I would say, to forgive someone you don't want to forgive, to sow a large gift into someone's life that maybe you don't want to let go of that money. The grace is there to do things that we don't want to do. Oftentimes, we don't experience that grace until we step into the invitation, right? It's like in Hebrews. He says, some were made strong before the battle. Some were made strong in the battle, and some he came to after, right? Most times, I don't recognize the grace too fast until I am fasting. Um, and I find that this is the way that it is for most. If you're waiting for some supernatural, crazy excitement, joy, like this great overwhelming unction and like forward push before you get going, sometimes that will come, but not every time. Sometimes we have to be willing to actually get in. 
And sometimes we actually have to be willing to pay the price and to start obeying before we find Jesus in the midst of the invitation. And could it be that sometimes you just realize that you need it? You do. Again, the more I don't want to, yeah. there's something there yeah. that should cause me to realize my need to. Yeah. It's that way with prayer. It's that way with the word. Yeah. You know, If I don't want to read my Bible, it's a clear indicator. You need to read your Bible. Yeah. You know, If I don't want to uh, spend time in prayer, I know that my heart is not soft enough and I need to. Yeah. I, would, I would apply these same uh, statements to fasting. <laughs>